This is KGW News at Sunrise. Now at five, one step closer to a little financial help. The Senate has passed the largest economic relief package in U.S. history last night. Now it's in the hands of Congress and then the president. This morning, we're getting a better look at how much money you could be getting. Two big Oregon companies are stepping up during this pandemic. The protective equipment Nike and Intel say they can provide that healthcare workers so desperately need. Lean on me when you're not strong. I'll be your friend. I'll help you carry on. Woo, not only can he perform surgery, he can sing too, and they're cute. They are from the Mayo Clinic. These doctors using their music to support colleagues. We're going to have more of their performance coming up. Good morning. Thank you for joining us here on your Thursday morning. Hey guys. Hey, good morning. Hey there, Nina. Good morning, Brenda. Uh, you know, as I sit here sandwiched between the two of you, I can feel the love on this <laughs> Thursday morning. And really, we are feeling the love <laughs> on our social media pages right now because our viewers the last few days have really delivered with great pictures and great videos of love throughout the community. So we're gonna share some of those in our Send the Love segment coming up later this half hour. Can't wait to see it, thank you, Drew. Right now we wanna check in with Rod. He is working from home and stirring up the forecast for us. How about a, a dry day? I mean, I know yesterday a lot of us didn't see much uh, of, of anything, but today we see nothing, all of us. We'll get a dry break. Rain will return tomorrow. Let's uh, check out the Wells Fargo camera. It is a chilly uh, start to our day. The clouds uh, have, have broken just enough to allow temperatures to drop. Now, PDX, one of the warmer spots of 39, but a lot of you have frosty conditions out there this morning, and we're also starting to see uh, increasing uh, reports of fog around the area. After that, this goes on to be one of those kind of partly to mostly cloudy days with thicker cloud cover coming in this evening, 48 at lunchtime, 54 at 5 p.m. I mentioned that uh, rain will be back tomorrow. We'll have that seven-day forecast coming up shortly. Rod, thanks. We begin with a live look at Washington, D.C., where late last night, midnight their time, the Senate passed a massive and historic $2 trillion aid package, and it now heads to the House. Now, the House is going to take a day to read the whole thing, and leaders say they won't vote until Friday. So here's another look at some of what's in that bill. People making up to $75,000 a year will get a check for $1,200. Married couples making up to $150,000 a year year will get 2400 bucks and those qualifying will get $500 extra per child. Now the bill also boosts unemployment benefits by expanding who's eligible like gig economy workers, folks like Uber and Lyft drivers and those who are self-employed. Those filing for unemployment would also get an extra $600 a week for four months on top of what the state already pays. So there's about $350 billion in small business loans, too, as well as another $500 billion slotted for larger entities, the airline and cruise ship industries. Hospitals will also get a big portion of the money. To get an idea of the price tag on this bill, it accounts for half of the federal government's $4 trillion annual budget. Now, Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin says those checks of $1,200 per person will hopefully get out to people in three weeks. Many of you, though, have been asking whether we're going to have to pay taxes on them. So we took that and other financial questions to Josh Lehner, an economist with the state of Oregon. At the federal level, they're not taxable. They won't change your eligibility for uh, you know, income assistance programs or food stamps or things like that. And so at the state level, it's going to vary state by state and whether they conform to the national code or not. As it stands now, he doesn't think we'd have to pay state taxes either unless the state legislature took action to collect. Well, with this financial help being worked on in Congress, there are a lot of rumors floating around about these payments. And of course, scammers, they're already trying to take advantage. The Verify team with our sister station in D.C. is dispelling some of those false claims. As the coronavirus spreads, so do myths and rumors online. That's why the Verify team is here to look at these online claims and find out if they're real. Take this post on Facebook, which has been shared more than 520,000 times. 
The recipient warns that he got this text reading, $1,000 to help you pass the outbreak has been pre-accepted. On Twitter, a similar post. Make sure you fill out the application for FEMA assistance so you can get that $1,000 check by next week. So let's verify. Are these online posts telling you to click a link to claim your payout legit? To find out, we reached out to our sources, the Department of Defense, the Federal Emergency Management Agency, and the Federal Trade Commission. And we should note, this story is changing by the hour. The Senate just agreed on a bipartisan deal, which is now heading to the House. It would give most adults $1,200, and parents would get another 500 bucks per child. And yet our experts warn that scammers are out there. FEMA said this, anyone who tells you they can get you the money now is a scammer. That's why the FTC is helping us out with a couple red flags. First, the government is not going to ask you to pay a fee to get that payout. Second, the government is not going to ask for your social security number, bank account, or credit card number. So we can verify. False. Many of these online posts telling you how to sign up to get a stimulus check are not legit. Your best bet is to wait for an official source to tell you how to collect. Good information. We have more about what the payments mean for you and your family on our website. You can also find more answers about your financial questions on KGW.com. Well, Oregon Governor Kate Brown announced the state will get a billion dollars in federal aid, and that support comes as the number of cases in Oregon grows now to 266 and now 10 total deaths. This morning, Washington reported nearly 2,600 cases and more than 130 deaths. So a lot of you have been asking about how many negative tests Oregon has seen because this puts everything in perspective. Out of the nearly 6,000 Oregonians tested, 95% have been negative. That's great. Regardless, we can expect the number of confirmed cases to rise as testing increases. Uh, we're watching the modeling data really, really closely. Um, I think the challenge is um, as we are ramping up testing capacity and there's roughly uh, will be an additional thousand uh, tests uh, per day uh, over the next few days, um, we're going to see obviously more uh, COVID-19 positive tests. Governor Brown says Oregon will push back the state tax filing deadline to July 15th, matching the new federal deadline. Well, the U.S. Postal Service confirms two workers in Portland have tested positive for coronavirus. One is a letter carrier in Oak Grove near Milwaukee who delivers to both homes and businesses. The other works at the big sorting facility near the airport. The Postal Service is not identifying those employees. We also don't know what condition they're in. A spokesperson says the risk to the employees at the sorting facility is low. And an employee who asked to remain anonymous tells us the sick person self-reported it and has not been to work since March 9th. Two local companies are stepping up to help with a critical shortage of protective masks for doctors and nurses. Nike is planning to make face shields. They came up with the prototype with the help of staff at OHSU. Nike executives told Business Insider magazine, once the gear is ready, they'll prioritize getting it to doctors and nurses here in Oregon. Intel, meanwhile, says it'll donate more than a million masks, gloves, and other gear from its own emergency stock. Oregon's governor praised the companies for stepping in to help, but wants the federal government to increase production nationwide. It is absolutely unacceptable that healthcare workers currently lack the necessary resources to protect themselves and their patients. As you all know, we've been working to tap federal supplies. We've received about 25% of our requests. Multnomah County said earlier this week it was expecting a shipment of protective equipment for Portland area hospitals. They were told to expect thousands, but the company says it needs hundreds of thousands. Meanwhile, Salem Health Hospital is asking for volunteers to make masks for nurses and other workers. So they have put together kits with the right materials you'll need to make them with a sewing machine. So if you want to help, you can pick up those kits today and tomorrow in Salem or Dallas, Oregon, and drop off your finished masks a few days later. We do want to add, and this is important because I've seen a lot of this on social media, the CDC is not recommending that you try and make your masks on your own without having the right materials. 
The Forest Grove Police Department has found another way to protect and serve during this health crisis. They're offering to pick up and deliver prescriptions for people living in the city, especially those vulnerable to coronavirus. That means folks over the age of 65 with pre-existing medical conditions. So if you need the help, you can call the Forest Grove Police Department.